appreciation. Ah, so you are an asset for us, mashallah. Then, so, oh, then alhamdulillah. I, I just want to tell you, yeah. Mm. Actually, I don't know, Dr. Saab, there was Iqbal Academy quite some years ago. Ji. Started by Dr. Rashid. He's, he was cardiologist. Ji. I have not seen him. For, are you aware of Ji. that? Ji. Oh, Chaudhry Saab, actually, I was part of that also. Oh, yeah. Mughal Saab, he was, was there. Ji, kafi koshish ki to unki kunko trace ni ho rebo. And then Iqbal Academy to kafi sari hai. Mene bhi shuru ki thi yaha pe start nalan mein. To iska itni badi meeting thi Royal Albert Hall mein I cannot believe. Achha. Hall was full and people were standing outside. It was the reason if we did not go further from that wo just just mokhi ki ye baat kare wo waqi bahut it was an excellent program. Yeah. Yeah. financially usko viable karne ke liye support ni mili to isliye wo phir aage nahi badh eventually yeah yeah brother babar is eventually people gave dr rashid gave 100 thousand dollars i was part of that to find actually a place we looked at with several places to buy and start a building sound like everyone we are live so we can go ahead and uh, get yeah, started okay. inshallah Ah, uh, thank you. Dr. Saab, ready when you are, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum everyone. We are live with another session for the Iqbal Studies Circle. So um, we're just waiting for Dr. Abdurrahman to join us. But nonetheless, we can... Um, Go ahead and get started. I'm here. I'm sorry. Somebody oh, was at the door. No problem. To yeah, Dr. Saab, we are ready. We are live. So, inshallah, oh. with, I guess we can go ahead and uh, dive into it. Okay. So, now uh, we are at the Jabi Shikwa, and this is coming from the divine now. These lines yeah. are as if they are coming from the divine down to Iqbal. You say, किसकी आंखों में समाया है शारे अग्यार और हो गई किसकी निगे तर्दे सलफ से बेजार कल में सोज नहीं रूह में एसास नहीं कुछ oh. भी प्यागा में मोहम्मद का तुम्हें पास नहीं oh, my God. My God. This, Now this is basically uh, analyzing as to the, the character of the believers and then these questions are being posed do you realize Tarek is somebody who has abandoned it? Ayin is constitution or the way or the agreement. Rasul Mukhtar refers to our beloved Holy Prophet, the last messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you know who, who is the one that has really ab abandoned the way taught by the, 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 the Prophet with authority? Mukhtar is somebody who has the power and authority, who has the ikhtiyar, choice mm -hmm. over what to, what to do, what not to do. So, who is the one that has abandoned the way of Rasul Mukhtar? Maslehat is the convenience. Mm -hmm. I, yani, jo asana ho karna. Uh, amal is uh, calm or mayar is the standards. Kis ki aankhu mein samaya. Samaya is jis ki, kis ki aankhu ke andar basa hua hai. Shiar is the way Ayar is the others. Logu ke uh, way of life kisne kiske dilu kiski ankuke under samaya hua hai. Or hogi kiski nigga. Nigga is the vision. Tarde salaf is the way of the elders, the ancestors, or your predecessors. Salaf is a slav, is the plural, and that means ancestors. Dada da parda da vara. Bezar is somebody who is really um, not. Ineffective, uh, it, right? Be, be, nahi, bezar is when you don't even like it. Uh, mm -hmm. Who has, who does not really like the way? You know, you you just uh, don't find it uh, pleasing to you. So you are bezar of it. That's what bezar means. That I I would rather not have it. Uh, 
Yeah. Ah, kalb, kalb mein soz nahi. Kalb is your heart. Soz is that kind of a feeling that keeps it going. Uh, eagerness to do something. A ruh is spirit or nafs or your uh, soul. Esas is the, the feelings and uh, perception uh, as to you know, what things should be like. Or kuch bhi paigam Muhammad. Paigam e Muhammad is the, is the message of our beloved prophet. Tumhe paas nahi. You don't feel any regard for the message of your last messenger. Kisi cheez ka paas rakhna means you want to hold it dear to you and you want to live by it. Now you uh, basically don't have uh, any, any, any feeling of following the message of your final messenger. So uh, now I... you can explain, expand on it because I just gave the difficult words in yeah. Urdu, into English. Mm -hmm. So I have a question from Mukhtar. Um, in Arabic, it often refers to something chosen. She's got means to choose something. Nee, nee. Chosen is Mustafa. Yeah. Mukhtar is the one that has the authority. Ikhtiar. Okay. Uh, got it. That's interesting. Yeah. When you you when you are uh, chosen, that's Mustafa. Istafa. Alif Swad Toe Fe Ya Alif. Yeah. That's that is chosen one. Uh, Mukhtar is who has been given the authority. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So, so okay. go ahead now. You can go by line so that we can expand on it. Yeah. So Kohan uh, Hatarika Aina Rasul Mukhtar. So Ayn, we had gone over that, the constitutionality. So who is the person? And it's a rhetorical question. So who is the one that is abandoning the constitutionality or the or the jurisprudence of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam of his authority who is the one abandoning the constitution of the one who has authority basically because if you yes. have recognized someone who has authority you are going to follow their laws as well so yeah. that's uh, also reflective of the constitutionality and authority of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reflected in the quran allah says the, what the messenger gives you, take it. Then I'm, he, I'm uh, glad you mentioned it. I'm glad you mentioned it because here when you say Rasul al Mukhtar, yeah. that does not mean he has authority necessarily over you. That yeah. means I have given him the authority mm. to, to, to do what he needs to do with you. So, in other words, that authority is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. For the prophet, for the messenger, and he then makes the constitution as a way of life for us. So you, you just, you, that's beautiful what you just referred, that um, mm -hmm. do what he gives you or what he tells you to do, which means now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the authority to our holy messenger that uh, whatever he, you say, they will have to follow. Yeah, and that authority is not just the authority of the prophet it's the authority given to the prophet by allah so if you're not following the authority of the prophet you're not following the authority of allah this is why rasul -e mukhtar messenger yeah. that has been given this power from yeah. me to to have it ayin that you had that that you guys have to follow yeah yeah and i think it's a reminder right the yep. god is speaking here technically right exactly god, god is the speaker the, that the is metaphorical yes. speaker these are the these are the yeah yeah, and the real question here is kiske amal ka mayar tum matab uske ittiba kar rahe ho maslahat waqt ki tum istemal kar rahe ho so um you know who's a, who what standard do you live your life by what standard are you utilizing to take action with and that standard is maslahat waqt ki right and i think this also goes into something else because there's similar verbiage mayar is the standard right yes yes and um Maslahat specifically is in reference to, I know we mentioned convenience, but, um, and the question that's being asked that whose standard of action is merely the need of time, right? No, 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 no. He says, Kiske amal ka mayar ab ye hai ki wo, yeah. haan, na, na, let me just make it Urdu yasan. Yeah. Kiske amal ka mayar ye hai ki wo vakt ki maslahat dekh ke karta hai. If, do you find it easy, whatever it is, maslahat is something that is makes it easy for you. Right now, you really have to get up for Fajr prayer, but 
मसलियत ये है कि चलो मैं बाद में कला पढ़ लूंगा अभी मुझे सो जाने दो तो एट दैट नो बडीज लुकिंग नो बडीज वॉचिंग सो हु मसलियत वक्त की तो तुमने अपने अमल का मायार जो है वक्त की मसलियत बना लिया है नॉट द स्टैंडर्ड दैट वॉज गिवन टू यू बाई द होली प्रॉफिट बट वट एवर इज कन्वीनियंट फॉर यू एट द टाइम दैट्स वट यू आर डूइंग and i think also something to talk about here is waqt ki maslahat um in my head i was looking at it from a different perspective actually there is discussions within islamic law about the maslaha basically what is the reason that you may forego an action because i think what people misconstrue and this is important to understand is that islam's jurisprudence does not change much and jurisprudence is what the wo qanoon ki buniyad ko jurisprudence kehte hain angrezi mein hum log right قانون جو وہ اصول فقہ بنتا ہے اگر ان کے کپڑے پہ خون لگ گیا فار ایگزامپل یا کچھ نجاست لگ گئی تو اس چیز کو ان کو کاٹنے پڑتا تھا اب ان لوگ ہم لوگ کو تو وہ نہیں کرنا ہم لوگ دھو دیتے ہیں ایک دفعہ دو دفعہ تین دفعہ پھر وہ استعمال کر سکتے ہیں وہ کپڑے کو نماز میں یا قرآن پڑھتے وقت وغیرہ سو آور لاز میں بھی ڈفرینٹ بٹ آور جورس پروڈنس از دا سیم بٹ ناؤ ہیئر واٹس بینگ اسپوکن اباؤٹ از دس یوٹیلیٹیریئنزم دس ایکسپیرینس دیٹ بیکمز دا ایزی وے ٹو گو اینڈ ایون ان اسلامک لا دے سی دیٹ اف یو اف یو فار ایگزامپل ہیو این ایکسپشن لیٹ سی اف یو اف یو یوز دا رکسا فار سم تھنگ رائٹ لیٹ سی یو آر یو آر گیون این الاؤنس بٹ یو اسٹل چوز ٹو لیٹ سی ناٹ ایکسرسائز دی الاؤنس but you try your best to do something. For example, you are, um, you're not feeling well and you yes. can't make wudu, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say you try and make wudu, but you don't have to, you can actually make tayammum because your body hurts and everything or someone can make something for you so that mm-hmm. you don't have to make wudu. But let's say you're just like to yourself and you can't make ruku or you, can make, you can't make sajda. If they have the ability to make ruku or sajda, they can sit while praying, right? Or pray while sitting. But if yeah, they make yeah. the choice to to make ruku or to make such that, then they're rewarded for it. But here, they're saying that every single time you're just going for the easy way out, the utilitarian way out, the expedient way out. Expedient you don't have to way care. out, yeah. Who has made it a standard of uh, conduct but looking for expediency only? Not yeah. really necessarily what is right, but what is expedient at the time. Yeah. So you don't, the, you don't make the hard, you don't make the hard decision. You just make whatever is easy and expedient you know, for you. That's, for you. that's it. And you have made it as your way of life now. Amal ka maya. That is by, that's how yeah. you judge your actions now. Not really what is right. You do the bare minimum. It? Yeah, bare minimum. What is experience at the time? Yeah. Okay, next. So, Very good. So then after that, um, one second. Kiski aankhon mein samaya hai shiar e aghyar and we had mentioned shiar or symbols and samaya kiski aankhon mein samaya hai tumne. Meaning, um, basically in other you found like a way in other traditions and other ways of people and we're going to go over how that looks like the hunud and the nasara like the ways of using christians but here that you have found the symbols of others to pl- place yourself into you rather follow the symbols of others the way of other people exactly you know that's that's, the, that's what people end up doing um yes you know um You oh. find it pleasing. Ankhum and Samaya, it's really, you have gotten these things into your eyes. This is what you like to see. And you like it when you see other people's way of life and you have forgotten your own. Yeah. So when, when it's Ankhum and Samaya, that means you don't find anything wrong with that anymore. Yeah. That it's now ingrown into, you, into your eyes, into your, in your sight, and you find it pleasing. Hmm. Yeah. I think also it goes back to something else, Arsab. I, I've noticed something. There was an article that somebody had written about um, mm-hmm. on Facebook. Uh, it was by a Muslim scholar. She had actually mentioned how she's noticing a rise in Christmas trees in Muslim people's houses, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, she was mentioning that, yes, there may not be a religious connotation to some degree anymore, but often Muslims are placing, Christian, or, or placing Christmas trees in their house, not because of the fact that, like, you know, there's no actual issue with this or there's, um, it's not a part of religion. They're putting it there because they don't have anything within their own religion to celebrate. They don't understand their own faith. So they're like, we're going to put another one. Right? Exactly. The, end of the Christmas tree is, a shi'a, is one of the shi'ar. It's a symbol uh, uh, talking about that we are celebrating 
not just Jesus's birth, but his divinity and everything associated to that. And that's something as Muslims, we don't believe in. We believe in Jesus, right? We believe in his prophethood, but we don't believe him to be divine. We don't believe for him to be um, and anyone in that nature. And not only that, we don't necessarily believe that he was born. We don't confirm or deny he was born in December, but it wasn't the fact that people were making a conscious choice based on um, a religious ruling or something. They, were, they just don't have this sense within them to say that, hey, this is not a part of one of the, of the symbols of my faith. You know, you couldn't find a better example than this, what you just gave. It's fantastic. It explains everything. This is their way of life. And you adopt it not as a religious thing or anything, but this is this is what they are doing. So you want to do the same thing. So, and uh, you don't uh, find anything wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually interesting, Sarah. You make a very good point. Uh, this idea of cultural appropriation. So in a lot of circles, cultural appropriation is where, like for example, a white person wears shawar kameez, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not desi. So. In certain circles, they're saying that this is not a good idea. But the same people that may say that it's not good for someone of a different uh, ethnic background to wear the ethnic clothing of another group of people is not good, are the same Muslims who have completely, um, who, have, who have completely, I can't think of a worse word to, but bastardize their faith in mm -hmm. a way so that it doesn't represent what it was meant to represent, you know. And and that's the um, that's the double standard that we're living in. Yeah. But, Right? Mm -hmm. That who has become um, tired? Sick and tired. Yeah. Yeah. Sick and tired uh, of their. Actually, yeah, bizarre than a sick and tired. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now that it came, yes, it looks. Yeah. Sick and tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are the. Right? Ah, so who's, yeah. whose eyes have become um, sick and tired? Mm -hmm. of the ways of their ancestors and salaf refers to those people who you're supposed to follow right, right. yes and that's the that's the main point the people that that uh are, are before you you become tired of their traditions and what's the reason for that yeah, you see, was, mm -hmm. no, wait, wait, wait. look at these lines no kiski aankhon mein se maya aur nigah tar de salaf se so uh -huh. see that number one is the what you are actually seeing and doing number two tars and shiar is basically the same thing Tars is the activity. It, it's a, a it's a functionality. Tars is the way you do things, and shiar is how you perceive the way that you should be doing. Yeah. So, yeah, shiar becomes your routine, and tars is the the method in, by which you do things. So, tars is salaf and shiar is ghar. Apnu ka tarika or gharu ka gharu logon ka tarika. Basically, he has put these two. Uh, in beautifully by Anke or Niga. Okay, your, your eyes don't want to see the your ancestors' way of life, but they have now really gotten very uh, used to the ways of life other people of the of the mm. non non-Muslims. When you say Aghyar, it means rare. Rare is somebody else, and else is other than Muslim, other than a believer. So Aghyar is the plural of that. Yeah. Okay. Said. Yeah. I mean, if, if poetically this is as perfect as you can get. <clears throat> yeah. Kalb mein soz nahi. Go ahead. Yeah. You see. Mm. Ways of others. All right. Kalb mein soz nahi. Ruh mein saas nahi. Kuch bhi pegaam hai Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ka tum hai paas nahi. So kalb mein soz. There's no eagerness in your heart. You just don't care to even be Muslim. You don't care to follow the way of Muslims. You don't even perceive it. You don't realize it. You don't feel it in your soul even. You don't even... Exactly. Yeah. Kuch bhi, nothing, right? Kuch bhi nahi hai. Pegham Muhammad, his message, right? Usme kuch saath hi You have no regard for it because nothing hits you. If you don't feel anything, why would you have any regard for it? Not, not only regard, the sense of protection of it, sense of holding on to it, sense of ownership to it, pass, say, moral, all that. The, Can I say gharat? No, 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 no. It's that you have been given this, this is in your custody, mm -hmm. and you have, you don't realize that you have to protect it. So this is why souls means you're not struggling to save it. Esas means you don't even realize that you're losing it. Yeah. Pagham e Muhammad is the sub subject matter here in this these two lines. Pagham e Muhammad 
को संभालने का तुम्हें कोई एहसास नहीं रहा तुम्हारे दिल के अंदर इसमें तकलीफ कोई तुम्हारे दिल के अंदर इस, इसमें हिम्मत करने की कोई कोशिश भी नहीं है और और क्या कहते हैं तुम्हें इस भी बात का एहसास भी नहीं कि ये जो है तुम गलत कर रहे हो कल में सोच इज हिम्मत रू में एहसास इज द फीलिंग or pass is what you are going to lose you have something that uh, you are supposed to protect and you are protecting it mm. okay does anyone have anything else to add it's fairly sim- simple yeah okay i guess we can go on to the next one inshallah yes you see these uh, let me just make final point let me i'm okay. sorry about that yeah this is paigham e muhammad is the subject matter for this whole whole thing in paigham e muhammad ke liye kya karna tha this was given to you by by allah's authority from him on the first line and you have become you know become experienced and do what is experienced for you all of this is related to the message of allah uh, of that Pro- prophet asam has given to us so if the whole thing subject matter is the message that we received we are not taking care of it yeah okay that's that's beautiful yeah now we can go to that okay ja ke hote hain masajid mein safa ra to gareeb zehmat e roza jo karte hain gawara to gareeb naam leta hai agar koi hamara to gareeb parda parda rakhta hai agar koi tumhara to gareeb umara नशा दौलत में है गाफिल हमसे जिंदा है मिलत बैजा वो रबा के दम से ब्यूटीफुल दिस इज इजी बाय द वे तो आई थिंक गो हैड नॉट मच ऑफ ए आई थिंक सफारा वाज स्टैंडिंग इन प्रेयर राइट सफारा इज स्टैंडिंग इन लाइन यस स्टैंडिंग इन लाइन मेकिंग सफ मेकिंग द लाइंस ये जहमत रोजा द ट्रबल ऑफ फास्टिंग ये द यस What did jaake hote hain? How would you translate that? Oh, jaake hote hain. Masajid, masajid me jaake safo me khade hote hain. Ah, okay. Jaake masajid me gareeb, gareeb masajid me jaake saf aara hote hain. See all these words? Yeah. Yani ke wo bata rahe hain ke gareeb log jo hain wo masajid me jaake saf aara hote hain. Yeah. That is the poor are the one that go there and stand in line to pray. नेक्स्ट वन रहमत रोजा जो करते हैं गवारा तो गरीब गरीब अगर अगर कोई रहमत रोजा गवारा करता है तो वो गरीब लोग हैं यहाँ बिकॉज ऑफ तो आ गया है इसलिए तो गरीब जो रोजे की जहमत को गवारा करते हैं नाम लेता है अगर कोई हमारा तो गरीब सो नाम लेना जिक्र करना यानी Uh, uh, rakhta hai, agar koi tumhara to gareeb, so if anybody that hides your faults, it's the poor. Exactly. Somebody that yeah cares for your yeah. privacy or whatever else. Because we so live that, in a society that loves to um, prioritize or, or rather profit or exploit the faults of others. Ah uh, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they are the ones that are keeping keep, keeping your honor and not really revealing and saying how bad you are. They are just not saying anything to you. Yeah. that they are the one taking care of the things that you should be doing also but they are they are kind of uh covering up what you should be doing and not you don't even realize uh, that you are missing there if they stop going to the masjid there will be nobody there then everybody will find out <laughs> that yeah. nobody came for fajr prayer what's wrong with the muslims then you will be caught but then there are enough people there and the rich people are not there nobody nobody you know, nobody knows so the poor one poor are the one that are really you know holding on to to, to the stuff and uh, you are not exposed mm. Mm. and then i think this last line the shadda i don't know why i got added there but umara in nashay daulat mein hai right nashay daulat mein yes and afil yeah. hamse the yeah. rich people out because of their resources and power and money they are so intoxicated in that that they are totally oblivious to us to me they don't remember me much Yeah. Nasha is all that when you are intoxicated with wealth you are so wealthy you are enjoying it so much that you don't care about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And Umara for those that don't know it's the it's the plural of Amir. 
Amir, right. yes. So, Amir banda hai. Just... Amir, haan, Amir, money-wise, not yeah. in terms of power, but yeah. haan, money. Hmm. Right. Amir hona. So, usse Amir ho. Agarib ki opposite. Agarib ki opposite. Yep. Exactly. So, actually, that's important for people to keep in mind. Because we are talking subject. about Agarib. Amir or Agarib ke baare mein. Haan, haan, bilkul. Agarib upar baat ho rahi thi, to ye Amir. Yeah. Zinda hai millat e beza, ghuraba ke dam se. So, haan. zinda hai millat e beza, yani the Muslims, the Muslim yes. community. Yes. Yes. The chosen people, well, bezai, and they're white or no, no. The illuminated bezai is for people yeah. with 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 a bright message. Yeah. Bezai usually means white or illuminated or shiny, but here milat bezai is the the people with message of Islam. So pagame bezai is the is the is the message of Islam. So milat yeah. bezai is Muslims believers. Gurba yeah. ke dam se agar ye Musliman kum ki agar ye community agar iski koi existence hai to this is because uh, on behalf of the poor people because of the poor people that you still you know at least have an identity as muslim community yeah you know it's interesting i and i guess i was incorrect on this in my mind dam i thought was blood no 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 dam oh, means oh, just oh. because they are there alive ah because so they are in alive. arabic Huh. Yeah, in, in Arabic, uh, dumb an actually an refers to blood. Yeah, uh, this this dumb is nafs. This is the breathing. This is the inhaling and how and exhaling. That's called dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Unke wajeh se. Ah, ah. Woraba ke dumb se because they are they are kya kehte hain zinda hain abhi. So unka yeah. dumb baki hai. Their existence is there. This is why you are zinda because the world starts also zinda. Zinda hai millet e beza ke horaba ke dam se, because horaba is alive, this community is alive. If horaba yeah. were not there, if everybody was rich, so to speak, then probably nobody would come to pray. It actually reminds me of a of a famous narration uh, where a man came to the Prophet Sallam and you know he had a successful business, and the Prophet Sallam was complaining, or well, the man was complaining to the Prophet Sallam because uh, he said, "My brother just like." You know, it takes too much money from me, and I support him. And the Prophet Sallam told him that because you are supporting your brother, your business is running well. If you stop supporting your brother when he need when he needs your financial help, then your business will also fail. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. But वही है हम सब लोग समझते हैं कि मैंने कमाया, मैंने किया, मैं यहाँ आया, मैंने बिजनेस चलाया, मैंने पढ़ाई किया. But it has nothing to do with that. There's a certain order in which those less fortunate than you, their prayers and their efforts and their existence is letting you. You know, exist in that space. True, that's very true. Yeah. All right. Especially all those spiritual connections, they are very, very true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay. Anyone have anything to add here? If not, we can move on to the next one. May, yeah, may one. I add something a little bit? Sure. sure please. Go ahead. Well, I I live with Iqbal all my life. Mm -hmm. He changed my life. I saw. And then he came in my dream. Hmm. I, I came across his verses and I could not sleep two, three days. Then he came in my dream in Lahore. I see. Mazang Chungi, Custard Officer Colony. So I'm going to the prayer. This is the dream now. Mm -hmm. uh, in the morning, I went to sleep, but could not sleep all night. I read his verses, especially. About the whole, his one verse kind of described the whole kind of uh, kingdom mm. of United States. I could not sleep. I was scientist by training, and I thought he was a poet. I never tried. I never even read his poetry. No, mm. but I came across his verses, and I looked at them, and I could not sleep. Then he came in my dream. But to cut the story short, so wherever I go, I keep his poetry. Especially, his Persian poetry is translation, spiritual translation of Holy Quran. Yes. So I'll just give you one example. I use it everywhere in friends, wherever I live. I come to this town. I live in Lawrence. I go, and it is so kind of bravery in his glam. I go and I tell my mayor. Our mulk, mulke mas, ke mulke khudai mas. Mm. It's powerful poetry is in Persian. Yes. 
and that mayor, he was deputy commissioner of the state government. He said, what's this? I said, this is the teaching of my uh, master. Poet, master. <laughs> that her mulk, mulke maas, ke mulke khudai maas. Every country is my country because it's my God's country. And I told him, Lawrence is my town because <laughs> it's my God's town. Mm. Yeah. So to mm. Cut the story short, he was so impressed, he became very close friends with me. Mm. He would take me for you know lunch once a month, mm. and then township we came, and then I made Lawrence Township sister city of Lahore. Ah, beautiful. With the same, you know, there there is a organization called Sisterhood of Cities. Mm -hmm. So he said, oh, very good, surely. And uh, then if you make effort through really spiritual feelings and powers, there are fascinating ways people appreciate it. Beautiful. Then I proposed to him, can we make Jersey, New Jersey state as a sister of Punjab province? And uh, awesome. yeah, so then we actually our Lawrence Township became sister city. Our council general came here, met with the council, and officially they made Lawrence sister city of Lahore. And same thing I met Mia Shajar Rahman was the mayor of Lahore at that time, mm. and I went to uh, chemical technology at that I, you know uh, I, as. Uh, uh, student and across from that is uh, uh, you know mayor's office. Yeah. So then he said he saw me doing these things. They appointed me to a few committees. I created a few committees, but then he said, "Well, I cannot go to the inviting the president to New Jersey." But I, sp I, you know, sp proposed him that we can write to our governor. governor and uh, Tom Kane was governor and I did all the writing. He would just sign it. I so see. I wrote a letter to governor uh, Kane from him. Can you invite president Zia ul Haq here? He, he came to Washington and can you invite him to visit here? And we would like to make these two uh, New Jersey state and Pakistan, uh, Punjab province sister city to promote business uh, college, uh, you know, education, starting some, you know, scholarships for students between Punjab University, did he come? University. Did he come? Did he? Did he come? It, did oh yeah, this is what happened. Hmm. Uh, governor said, "I am a governor of the state, and he's head of uh, a country." Right. That was one. Yes. But uh, yeah, the message was given to him. He said, "My." Uh, schedule is maybe prepared over a year ago, so I cannot take off and come, but bring your mayor to New York, both of you come over. Yes. And we can talk about it. So then that's true. My mayor and I, we went to uh, meet him in New York City. <laughs> in Pakistan consulate probably. Hmm. No, no, he had a big meeting. I see. And then I went and I reminded uh, his staff that this is what he uh, told Very me. Very nice. So you are impressed by Iqbal's poetry. Oh, Marshall. Iqbal's poetry is so powerful. It kind of goes to the heart of non-Muslims. Thank you. You can Dr. see he was uh, not a Muslim and yeah. it ran, went straight into his heart. Beautiful. Yeah. And same thing I help a woman become first mayor of the township through this thing. I was I a was member of the League of Women Voters. Beautiful. So yeah. let's let's do this one. Let's, let's come back into it, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Thank you. So I have some suggestion, maybe whenever you have time. Uh, Iqbal's poetry can conquer the world. Well, just to last one sentence. Sure, go ahead. I'm right. I have actually sent a letter to uh, President Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. about spiritual powers and godly forces and their interactions and how do they change mankind and nations. Mm -hmm. So nice. just to mention to you. And behind this, I did not mention Iqbal at all because Muslim, I did not want it to become. But I just wrote the topic is spiritual powers, godly forces, interaction, mankind, and whole earth. Beautiful. Awesome. A couple of pages. Beautiful. So I sent to both of them. Awesome. Jazakallah khair. Yeah. Okay. And that's okay. all based on Iqbal's poetry. Yeah. Beautiful. Why is a calm key? وہ پختہ خیالی نہ رہی وائز قوم کی وہ پختہ خیالی نہ رہی برق طبی نہ رہی شولہ مقالی نہ رہی رہ گئی رسم اذان روح بلالی نہ رہی فلسفہ رہ گیا تلقین غزالی نہ رہی مسجد مرسیا خاں ہیں کہ نمازی نہ رہے یعنی وہ صاحب اوصاف حجازی نہ رہے Beautiful. Why is a calm, the preacher of the nation, Pukhta Khyali, maturity of thought, Bark Tabai, the power of nature Lightning. of, of uh, like electricity, like uh, Bark is Kali, like... It's a tezi ki sifat. Ah, the, kya sifat? Tezi ki sifat, how quickly it ah, comes. Okay, Bark, bark is bijli ki tarah tezi, yes, tezi ki sifat, chaliye. Tezi ki nature, taba is nature. Yeah. Yeah. Shola Makali. Makali is speech. Shola is really having very flamboyance into it, very fuming, very, very invigorated. Yeah. Shola is a flame, but here Shola Makali is that power in speech. Yeah. Ragai Rasme Azan. Just the tradition of calling an Azan is there. Ruhe Bilali. The spirit in the azan that Bilal had, that has disappeared. Falsafa ragya. Philosophy you still have. Talkeen ya ghazali na rahi. But the, the message that came out of that, the mafhum that ghazali explained to you as to what that, that uh, message is actually in terms of what your action should be, that you have lost. You don't have the advice yeah. from ghazali, but you seem to talk, dry discussion of philosophy behind all of that. Mm. Beautiful. Now here, it overall communities uh, shortcomings are being discussed that even your preacher does not have that maturity of thought. He does not have that fiery speech anymore, does not have ability to really invigorate the people that are listening to him. Azan is being called in the masajid, but that spirit behind the azan of calling to prayer is gone. And you read the messages now and you, you discuss the philosophy about why is this and why is this not. And yet you do not have the understanding that Ghazali had that uh, how it should change your life. Then he says, Masjid Marcia. Marcia is something, a poetry that you write on somebody who is dead, who's, who's, who you want to honor because the person had good qualities and he is no longer with us. So you write poetry in that person's honor, that's called Marcia. So now he says that the masjid, the mosques are singing the poetry of dead people. The, <laughs> the, the people who used to come there, they are gone, they are dead. So, and the, the, the mosques are now uh, kind of uh, loudly uh, complaining about it. Man apna purana papi barson se namazi banna saka. Masjid to bana di. Shab bhar mein. Yeah. Iman ki hararat walo ne. Yani, in other words, wo sahib e ausaf e hijazi. Sahib is the person who has it. Owner. Ausaf is the qualities. Hijazi is from hijaz Islam. Islam ki qualities ke jo jo holders the, jin ke paas wo sab Islamic qualities thi, our believers' uh, way of life, tha, those people have gone. Masjid e mercy aha hai ke namazi na rahe, yani wo sahib e ausaf e hijazi na rahe. Yeah. Very, very beautiful. Oof. So there's a couple of things then. Number one, why is it qawm ki wo pukhta khayali na rahe? This is so, so, so reflective of our current state. I know uh, Mariam had mentioned that uh, the other two lines actually mm -hmm. were about um, our 
are, you know, like the current state of Muslims today. But today, why is it Qawm, the one who's advising the people, the preacher, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you see this constant insistence to dumb things down more and more and more and more. And those people who lay claim to be speakers of Islam or speakers that are trying to connect to people in the good intention of trying to connect to people end up really boiling things boiling things down to the extent that um, they're just helping those people strengthen their insecurities. So you give them um, things about the faith, which are, which are only easy for them to do. So why is it qom bhi gaya us mamle mein, right? Or jo uska pukhta khayali hona chahiye, that maturity of thought that has to be there, that connects to their mind, that connects to their heart, that's also not there. The wo bhi gaya. Barakat tabhi na rahi, shorai maqali na rahi. And here the, the, the fastness of the lightning, as you had mentioned, right? That... Mm -hmm that um that very quick the, the quickness of it the the severity of it that's also not there uh, or at that point the flame in your speech you know there's a hadith of the prophet sallam that uh inna min al bayani la sihra, that indeed in speech that in speeches there is a sense of magic that occurs in it that causes people to change good speech good rhetoric has a magical element to it that causes people to change and that's not there either but mm -hmm. what is what does remain? And there's I have used these two lines, the uh, you know, uh, I've used these two lines in khutbas for probably the last 10 years that I've been giving khutbas, <laughs> you know, because it, it hits home, right? So, you, 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 you know how to give the adhan, you know how to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But Bilal ka jurudha usme, the, the soul of Bilal that once existed there and no longer exists, right? right so the right, purpose right. that, you know, that Bilal used to give the adhan, you know, to call the believers together in the presence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is no longer there. And then the second part, falsafa rah gaya, sab log ab falsafi ho gaya, right? You go to a dawat, sab log wo politics or religion ke falsafi baith ke wo apne wo uh, rai de rahe hain is mawzu pe, us mawzu pe. And... That's the truth of it, right? Okay, so sabne falsafa sikli. Everyone knows philosophy. Talqine Ghazali na rahi. But the understanding or the quality of advice that Ghazali would give is no longer there. For those of you that don't know, Imam Al Ghazali was one of the greatest, foremost philosophers of Islam, right? He talks about aqidah. He talks about ilmul kalam, and that's literally what it's become. If you remember, one of the first poems that we did for this um, for this uh, Iqbal study circle was um, the idea of that today people's idea of God's oneness is what? It's become nothing more than a discussion of philosophical matters at the end of the day. So now everyone wants to study philosophy to debase God, to debase religion, to debase Islam. But that's not why Ghazali studied philosophy. Right? And that led to people saying, oh, you shouldn't study philosophy. You shouldn't understand the inner workings of the world. You shouldn't understand Foucault. You shouldn't understand um, German philosophers. You shouldn't understand Karl Marx. You shouldn't understand anyone. Right, but what you have to understand at the end of the day is that um, uh, how to break things, right? And not build things. And then the last part, masjid uh, masjid right? That now, yeah. the, what, why is it that we're eulogizing people, right? The masjid has become a place to eulogize the dead. Who mm -hmm. died? Namazi <laughs> right? Huh. There's no yeah. one left to pray. And that's yeah. where I, I had mentioned those two lines. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Muqaddas, I'll take your question in, in a moment. Um, but the two lines that I had brought up were Masjid to Banadi Shab Manki Hararat Walona. So this is a story that I had brought up about, it's a true story actually, about a masjid in, I believe it's in Lahore today, that yes. there was a piece of land, and I've, I've brought this up before too, wherein a group of Hindus said that this is our land, we want to build a temple on it. Muslims said this is our land, we want to build a masjid on it. And the judge says, I'll give the land to the person that can build the masjid as quick as possible. So the irony of this is that in their zealousness, the Muslims built the masjid, not in a week, not in, you know, not in two days, but in one day, they built it overnight. Masjid to banani, banadi shab bharme. They made it overnight because the Hindus said, we'll make it in a month. And the Muslims said, we'll make it in a day. And um, they made the masjid, but guess what? Nobody actually came to pray in it. They were so zealous about it. And if you want to talk about something uh, reflecting 2021, Look at how many beautiful empty building masajid, you know, that we do we, we have all throughout the world, or specifically in America, which barely get used, and it gets it gets filled up one time for Juma, and everyone's like, oh, we need to expand the masjid, like that's your biggest fear is that God forbid we can't fit everyone in our huge complex, but masjid to banadi shab bharme iman ki harat walon hai, right? Bhoot achha kya tumne?
But tumhari purani aadat kya hai? Man apna purana papi barson se namazi banna. So you had all this time to actually come and pray in it, and you didn't utilize it for the main purpose you were supposed to utilize it. So that same token is reflected here. You've made the masjid into a ground of mourning for the dead namazis in your community, for the dead. you know hearts that may be in your community yani wo sahib aur saaf hai hijazi na rahe in other words those that were supposed to have those hijazi qualities also that has been shown to us in uh, shikwa to be hijazi means to be uh, uh to be aligned with the prophet and now the muslims don't have the qualities of what it means to be a muslim of islam so yani wo sahib aur saaf hai hijazi na rahe so they they didn't even understand the truth of what it means to be a muslim um yeah. Yeah, and Sarah said it perfectly. Islam is maybe in people's back pockets, but not in their hearts. Yeah, um, Hijaz is that area of uh, close to Medina and that part where the Islam started. So the Hijazi became uh, equivalent of Islamic uh, state kind of a thing. Although yeah. then, then uh, you know, Muslims are all over the world now. But at that time, um, that is the Sar Chashma. of islamic message that's why hijaz is important in iqbal's poetry so he he uses that uh, quite a bit one reason he mentioned falsafa rah gaya talqeen e ghazali is because there was a time period uh, even 100 years before iqbal's time and during his time when the discussion had really gone away from the practice of islam but about the about the anatomy of islam and philosophy in other words as to what it means and how it came about and this and that and they were not emphasizing the the practice of islam so this is why he is basically saying that now you think you are a islamic scholar by being able to tell the the benefits behind behind fasting of 24 hours now 12, 12 hours rather compared to 24 hours and the and the medical aspects behind it and this and that all these things you discuss but do you fast no so that was the thing which was a big uh, uh, problem with uh, with muslim umma let's say 2 3 centuries back until uh, you know the islamic states came about and now mashallah things are getting towards the newer generations are more and more interested in in really sticking back to the to the way of muslims in 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 educated and practicing circles obviously uh, with expansion into the world and to the globe we are losing quite a few youngsters to other other cultures but at the same token there are quite a few uh, uh, areas and centers where is uh, islam is prospering and mashallah uh, yeah. gaining ground gaining ground yeah just one comment and then i'll let muqaddas inshallah and um there was mm. something that this reminded me of something um i was invited to speak at a conference some years back and uh, i declined it just because i didn't appreciate the behavior of some of the organizers mm-hmm. and one of the things that they were making it seem like were like that they were doing me a favor by letting me speak at this conference mm-hmm. and i kind of had this um you know something in, an inspiration within me and it was that allah doesn't need me to speak at this conference and allah does not need you to organize the conference right I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind that Allah doesn't need me to teach and Allah for example in this place you as a student doesn't need you to learn but Allah is bringing us together for a reason and point being as many people as are that may be walking out of their faith there are that many more people walking into the faith idha ja nasrullah al fath waraita an nas yadkhuluna fi din illa afwaja we'll see people enter inshallah into it but what's important is that we continue to do our bidding we continue to do our work and Allah will can continue to do his work and we shouldn't try to do allah's work but we should just focus on what we're supposed to do and it's exactly what you said doctors that people get f- focused on the anatomy oh do you know why we should fast for this medically approved reason or do you know why this thing is such an awesome rational way of understanding something no. well today what is rational was considered okay tomorrow it won't be galileo was killed why because he thought that god forbid the earth revolved around the sun and not the other way around so rational rationalism died with galileo right rationalism is only is only as good as the majority of people deem it to be so but at the end our rooted understanding is that within our faith and that's what's important to understand uh, yeah muqaddas i know you had your hand up for a while so please go ahead and uh, you know if you have any comments to me i i have actually three points um 
one is jo band isse pehle tha uh that reminds me of uh, uh, those verses from the quran uh where uh, when the prophets uh, went to preach uh, they were accused that they only had the poor followers right yeah. uh and then um uh, the second one reminds me of the time um jab uh, dambia when they used to go and invite people to islam the one of the excuse they would give is uh, how can we leave um the religion of our ancestors right and we i i feel like we have become those people now right mm-hmm. uh, where we don't have that um maybe that that level of uh, iman or the what iqbal is discussing uh, here uh, and i feel like we have converted into uh, those people because we take islam for granted because it's coming from our forefathers and uh, the third part i wanted to mention is one of uh, my uh, experience um, uh, not that long before covid is um, uh, during fajr one day i decided to go to the masjid and uh, i was very hesitant uh, because one as female during fajr time i was a little hesitant i don't know like how many other ladies will be there or not but i showed up and that is the time where you're feeling that okay even if i'm by myself maybe that's the opportunity i have to be closer to allah subhanahu wa taala without more distractions but when i entered the masjid there was no brother and i was there by myself and i it it i was really mad i was really mad that day and at, i came home i called the imam and i said why nobody was there and uh, uh, he listened to me and uh, he told me that uh, sister worry about yourself and uh, i i i i understood because i couldn't uh, agree or disagree with him but at the same time it it stayed with me uh, the whole experience uh-huh. and now this poetry is making me think about that experience as well but um, subhanallah uh, this uh, this is very relevant mashallah mashallah beautiful i mean see this the last comment that you made about you being the only musalli in the in the masjid is so relevant to us here in this in this community here uh um there are people that are eager to establish islamic centers and masajid quite a, quite frankly and yet uh that the society and the way of life and the and the schedules of people are such that it's really really very very difficult for people to 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 assemble the way they would want to so it's not easy an imam will not be able to criticize it poor fellow because he knows that it's not easy and uh, he goes there especially if he's paid full time he goes there many times alone i remember because i've been here for, for about 50 years now in this country and in our masjid when it was coming up we would have to you know it's not like this we would have to open the gate from outside first we had that larger gate bigger gate to to keep away the neighbors and dogs and others and then go inside and open the door which with, with tremendous difficulty and it's cold you turn the heat on by the time the place is warm you are you know ready to go back very difficult one two three people and that's how it started so i don't know time period of this masjid wherever you had this experience but uh, mashallah you will see down the road these masajid will be abad and this will be abad by the people that are really coming into islam now from these local communities inshallah and they are very sincere ones and uh, we have a few of those in our masjid that uh, i'm embarrassed um, to see that they can find fault with us and they are right and they sometimes point it out so it's it's uh, it's we are going through a transition islam is getting a strong hold in this in this place now but right now it's building its inf- infrastructure and some masajid are very busy others uh need more musallis but inshallah yeah i think the one thing that i also wanted to mention and then hamad i know you have your hand up um i really recommend i know there's only like 16 of us right now here but for those two that are in your communities like you should be very active on making sure your masjid isn't just building a big building for the sake of build, building a big building right um and i like to think of this and you know this is a this is my theory is that we have if you traverse through india and pakistan and bangladesh even burma like we see within these olden muslim empires they had this really bad rawaj 
right? It's going to be a lot because they'd go build large mausoleums and large masajid and now they're museums. And I remember I had this um, thought when I was in New Delhi and I went to Lodi Gardens. For those of you that are have been to Lodi Gardens, yes. uh, you know, Doctor, I don't know if you've, if you've had a chance to go there. I saw, uh, yeah, I was there and I saw yeah. that mausoleum that you're talking about. And, you know, and it's just like, that's why Rah Gay Rasme Azan Ruhe Bila Ye Ye Sam Nami Nazara. Rah Gay Rasme Azan Ruhe Bila Ali Nare. Rah Gay Masajit Koi Musalli Nara. Right? <laughs> hey, seriously, it's like you go you go through India and Pakistan and you have the Mughals that built these huge, huge buildings, but nobody prays in them. Right? They're just museums now. And that's what that's becoming. And I think our Masajid down the line, you know, we have few communities. Forget even like prayer. Fine, prayer is important, but people forget like if you have a class, for example, you can organize that around prayer. You can have people show up for prayer and come for a class and stuff like that. But I really hope community people realize that. Ask yourself if you have a community. Do you know the names of everyone that is in your community? Do you guys get along? Or do we have these little like Desi Ardas that, that we're creating in an American Muslim community? Because if we're just creating Desi Ardas, then Allah is going to ask us about that on the day of judgment, that you were in a place where you had people united on Laila, Hillelah, Muhammad, Rasulullah, but you chose to create this as just a South Asian place of gathering. But how did you expand this to other groups of people? And I think it's important that we keep in mind, build your community before you build your masjid. Don't build your community after you build your masjid. The Prophet built his community before he built the masjid. Hamad, go ahead. So um, just had a question. Um for you guys, uh, uh, this reference to Imam Ghazali, uh, how, how often uh, does uh, Iqbal uh, mention him, or is this the one of the rare occasions he's mentioned him? He mentions him uh, uh, wherever necessary, but he he's a follower of Ghazali and not of Razi. So this is why he, he when he talks about uh, the spiritual aspect of Islam, he uses Ghazali's example. And when he talks about falsafa, then he goes to Razi, uh, Imam Razi. But um, I think he, he, he prefers Ghazali and talks about it. I don't know how many times I didn't pay attention to that. But um, this is Iqbal's favorite, one of the favorites. I'm sure there is a reason why you asked that question, Aman. Uh, is, is there anything about Ghazali no, that no, we have? No, I questions? just, I, I mean, usually you hear reference to the. Uh, Iqbal had a connection to Rumi and things, but uh, I haven't heard as much. Oh, no, uh, no, no. Rumi, Rumi was pure spirituality. Yes. Ghazali, Ghazali took a tremendous amount of effort in explaining Quran and in applied life. And he has, if you read his, his book, Ghazali's Tafsir, beautiful. Uh, he gives parables just like Rumi does. And he has made it simple for people to follow. With, with actual message and not the philosophy behind it that much. Uh, so his, his, uh, his work on Islam is, is commendable. I remember his, um, I know it's getting late, but he talks about uh, body and the soul like a, like a horse and, and, a, and a rider. He says, your soul is the rider and the body is the horse. You're going from one corner of the ground to the other to, so, if you can, if your soul is well nurtured and can control your body, you can then walk, you can have your hearts go straight path and cross the, cross the, the life without really you know, getting astray. And, but if your soul is weak and your body is very strong, then your, your, your hearts will go from here to there to there. You won't be able to control it. That is an example of Ghazali that I really love in applied in life. So you have to nurture your soul so you can control your bodily desires and then go through life in a straight path. So some things like that, which Ghazali has done, Rumi is totally different. Rumi is specific, uh, more centered towards spirituality, more centered towards explaining things by old tales and stories. Some of them he made, but others he used from the older literature. And he brought them in, changed them a little bit to Islamize them, but but uh, it's a different way. Iqbal has added a lot to Rumi. Iqbal wouldn't say it, and I I shouldn't say it either. But quite frankly, Iqbal's teachings, as compared to Rumi, when it comes to 
to not only hoodie but to many other things uh, is much more clear and much more easy to follow. Uh, it's amazing. I think one thing else to add, Dr. Saab, is um, why perhaps Ghazali is mentioned here. Many of you may actually not be familiar with why do people mention Ghazali so much and understand him. The main reason Ghazali is celebrated in the Islamic tradition is because he tried to bridge a gap that existed in the Muslim community. One was of the falasifa, of the philosophers, like the Greek philosophers. Yes. Um, and the other the one was the gap. At the time. Yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah. But, but between the is- Islamic spiritual masters, for example. Right. And on often it was one compared competing for the other. So he tried to bridge this gap and say, look, this is how we should understand this. This is how we should see things uh, in light of a good philosophy, right? As to how you pro- approach Islam. And, you know, this idea of falsafara hiyat al-qini ghazali na rahi. There was this um, a family friend who was mentioning this to me. She said that uh, there was someone in her family that she had told, like, hey, I'm feeling alone. I don't feel um, connected uh, to a family member of mine. And that family member who, you know, thinks that he's a master of Ghazali basically brought up like, oh, you know, Imam Ghazali was alone for so many years. And that's where I'm, where I think about, yeah, that this human is feeling an emotion. And instead of affirming this human, talking to the difficulty that they're feeling, you're saying Imam Ghazali lived so many years uh, alone. Well, that's not the answer to the question. That's not Ghazali's philosophy. The way Ghazali lived is not what he necessarily philosophized about. And I think this happens a lot. People, unfortunately, weaponize and misconstrue what so many scholars uh, may have actually meant by their words um, and utilize it in that way. So at the end of the day, Ghazali, after philosophizing for so many years, you know, you know what he said on his deathbed? He mm. says, I wasted all that time philosophizing. Just follow Islam easily and don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, don't worry about just philosophy because at the end of the day, you can philosophize all you want, but what are you actually acting upon? And that's what today was about. It's about what are you actually acting upon, right? All of this. Why is it called? So, right? At the end of the day, and it goes into everything else we went over today as well. That you know, you want you should support the gharib. Do the gharib sit there and philosophize? Right, you know it's interesting. So, so somebody had said that um, very seldom do you find a poor atheist, right? Because <laughs> of the fact that this idea of leaving religion or leaving faith—it's a very like bourgeois, I have money type of ideology. Because of the fact you've made it, so now there's probably nothing else that's out there. And then also what we had mentioned here—it's like if there was about leaving the way, the authority of the messenger and the way of the messenger. If you're going to li- li- live a utilitarian life, uh, you know, use and discard people how you want. Um, if you're going to take from the, from the work of others who aren't Muslim, that directly contradicts the teachings of Muslims. Um, and at the same time, if your eyes are sick and tired of looking at your own tradition, then who are you at the end of the day? Your heart lacks eagerness, your spirit lacks feeling. And at the end, you've discarded the messenger of the prophet, the message of the prophet. So that's why. All right, I think we are out of time, everyone. We're a little bit over time, inshallah. Um, inshallah, next week we'll go from here, Shorh, Hogoi Dunya, Se Musulman Nabut. So we're going to go from here tomorrow. And then this is another two of my favorite lines. Youth, Sayyid Biho, Mirza Biho, Afghan Biho, Yusab Yukucho Batab, Basa Musulman Biho. So we'll go over this next week, inshallah. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Jazakallah for everyone. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.